This video will describe using auxiliaries and groups on mixers. To begin, let's describe a basic mixer setup. In our setup, we have a mixer and two powered speakers. We have a microphone that is connected to the channel input, and then the output of the mixer is then sent to the left and right outputs. If we look at the back of the mixer, we are connecting the outputs of the left and right which are on the left side of our video. And if we look at the right side, these are the channel inputs. We have a mic in, a line in, an insert, and a direct out. If we look at the mixer from the top, the main sections that we'll be adjusting would be the gain or the trim, making sure that our signal is strong enough. As it comes in, we can then use the fader to adjust the level that is sent to the main faders. The main faders set the general output that finally goes to the speakers. Again, this is a very basic mixer setup, but let's do something a little bit more advanced. Let's use the auxiliary sends and outputs in a basic monitor setup. If we look at our basic setup, you'll notice that we have added two powered floor monitors. If we look at our mixer, these are the areas that we will be adjusting. Each channel in this mixer has six sends, but they all operate the same way. By adjusting this send, we are sending the signal that has already come into our channel input, and we will be sending to a master section. This master section also has controls very similar to the master faders. If we look at the back of the mixer, there are six auxiliary outputs and inserts. These are what we'll be using to connect to our powered monitors. If we look at our setup again, our microphone goes into channel one, and the outputs of the main are sent to the left and right main speakers. But we're gonna make an adjustment on our channel and make sure that our auxiliary one is sent to auxiliary one output, which is then connected to a powered floor monitor. And the same thing is done with auxiliary two. Now let's use auxiliary sends and outputs with a basic monitor setup, and now we'll add some effects. Here is our mixer again, our main speakers, our auxiliary one, auxiliary two for our floor monitors. But now we're gonna add a reverb unit and a delay unit. And this time on our channel strip, we're gonna make sure to send a signal using auxiliary five, which will connect to the input of the reverb unit, and it is also sent back in. Auxiliary 6 is sent to the delay unit, and it is also sent back in. To connect the ins and outs of an effect unit, we're going to utilize a special section of our auxiliary. It's called the insert. The insert actually acts like an input and an output by using a TRS connection, also known as a tip ring sleeve connection. Part of it will act as a send and part of it as a return. So let's look at our setup once more. We have our powered speakers, our powered monitors, and our microphone. We connect the microphone to channel one. The output of left and right are sent to the main speakers. Auxiliary one and two are sent to our powered floor monitors. Auxiliaries five is sent to the reverb unit, coming back in on the insert and auxiliary six is sent to the delay, coming also back in on the insert. So that now when we adjust five and six, we will hear echo reverb that is now being sent out to our main mix and even to our monitors as well. There are two ways to send auxiliary signals. The first is called pre-fade. The second is called post-fade. And the word fade is referring to the fader. On a pre-fade, the channel fader does not affect the auxiliary level send, meaning that whatever adjustments you make at the auxiliary level on the channel, the fader, if it's all the way down, does not affect the signal. However, in the post-fade setup, the channel fader will affect the auxiliary level send, almost acting like a second master control for the auxiliary send. A singer typically wants to hear a solid signal throughout their performance. 
So using the pre-fade is preferred so that when you make adjustments to their fader, they will not hear those adjustments and have the confidence they need to hear themselves accurately. However, in the post-fade, one typical use is to use it with an effects processor, which means the stronger signal you send in the fader, more of that signal will be sent to the effects unit, therefore creating a more dynamic response. Please note, auxiliaries can also come back in on a channel input. And some engineers like to have their effects ends not be processed through an insert, but the output of the effects unit will actually come back on another channel, allowing them to control the amount of effect that's sent to the main mix through a fader. Here again is our setup that we've described. Now let's go on to something different. Let's talk about fader groups. The basic idea of a fader group is this. You set levels of multiple channels with faders, and then you combine them into a group that is controlled together as a unit by another master fader. If we look at our mixer from the top, the fader section is highlighted here. Next to each fader is a series of buttons that we can assign groups. The first group that we most basically use is the left and right main section. The second button is to assign the fader to groups one and two, and the third button is to assign the groups to three and four. If we look at the back of the mixer, these are the outputs that the faders will be sending through. Let's describe how to assign a fader to a group. Let's take a closer look at our mixer. Channels 1 and 2 will be assigned to groups 1 and 2. And now these groups are colored green, showing that they will now be controlled by the master groups 1 and 2. Channels 7 and 8 will be assigned to groups 3 and 4. And they too, now colored blue, will be controlled by group fader 3 and 4. The remaining channels we'll assign to left and right, and they will go directly to our main mix using faders left and right. Let's assign a fader group now in a more advanced setup, and we're gonna be using the panning system to help us get more groups. In our scenario, we're gonna assign channel one and two to group one and two, but by panning them both left, they will now be controlled only by the odd channel number one. Channels three and four will also be assigned to group one and two, but if we pan them right, they will now be controlled by the even number, group fader number two. If we go on to channels five and six and assign them to groups three and four and pan them to the left, they also will be controlled by group fader number three. And channels seven and eight will also assign to group three and four but if we pan them to the right, they will be controlled by fader number four. The rest will be controlled by left and right main faders. Two things should be noted about group faders. They can be sent to the main left and right output, or they can be sent to the individual group outputs. This allows greater versatility in using these outputs for other things, like what we'll look in the next sample. We now have our mixer, our main speakers and our monitors like before, but we've added three more vocalists. We added the rhythm section and we've added a laptop to record the event and a video camera, possibly to stream the event. Let's see how the group faders can help us in a mixing situation. We're gonna assign all the singers to group one. We're gonna pan them left. We're gonna assign the rhythm section or the band to group two and pan them all right. You'll notice that group one and two are being sent to the output of the main left and right speakers. This is helpful in case we want to achieve a balance between the vocalists and the band. Instead of adjusting each band member up and down, we set the band at a level that works for them, and then we adjust them as a whole group to find balance between the vocalists. In this same situation, we're gonna take those same inputs 
and we're also going to select those microphones and the rhythm section to also be assigned to group three and four. We'll be using the outputs of the mixer for group three and four to go directly into our recording system to our laptop. So this allows us to make some adjustments to the signal that is going into the laptop or the camera and it makes it much easier. We also have our auxiliary sense one and two going to our band making sure that auxiliary one fits well for the singers. Auxiliary two will be for the band. Some singers don't like to hear a lot of the band, maybe just the keyboard. Some band members only want to hear the vocalists and more of themselves. These adjustments can be made on the individual channels. We're also going to have auxiliary three and four set up to use for our effects sends. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments section and please subscribe. Thanks.